Welcome to our latest episode of the e-business cast. Today we do it in English. It's not uh, usual. Um, but uh, we have uh, John Pressman here, um, a native English speaker. Um, and so we decide to offer it in English too. Um, John Pressman is a co co-founder of uh, Contract to Valley. And he is working with his tireless team. He has developed a platform for contract management and analysis that aims to help companies to take their contract world to a whole new level. John will tell us more about his exciting technology, what set it apart and how it can help companies save money and time. He will also tell us something about his extraordinary interest in public transportation. Um, so let's greet, uh, greet John and hi John, it's great to have you here in our invitation and in, in, in our uh, interview. Hi. Hi, yeah, uh, thanks for having me here and uh, yeah, thanks for agreeing to do this in English. Um, while I've uh, been in Germany for a few years um, and my German is uh, coming along, uh, I think for the purposes of this uh, podcast it's probably better to do it in English so I can clearly express what, uh, what we're all about at Contractually. So yeah, thanks again for having me on and uh, looking forward to telling you more about what we are doing. Yes, um, you're welcome, John. So um, could you tell us um, what makes Contractually so special for our business customers? What are you doing exactly? Yeah, so in a very concise um, form, we make it easy for businesses to pull uh, the data that's in their contracts out of their contracts and send it on to um Uh, forward use case. So, I mean, what what does that actually mean? Let's kind of pull back a little bit and, and talk about sort of the problems that face contracts as a whole right now. <clears throat> so, according to a 2021 survey from Ernst Young, um, of the, I think, over 2,000 companies that were surveyed, 99% of them uh, reported that they were having trouble managing their contracting workloads. Uh, 90% of those respondents said that they couldn't even locate where their contracts were uh, uh, stored. And mm -hmm. a further 78% <clears throat> indicated that they weren't even or at least systematically monitoring the terms of their contracts. Um, and, and that's the, the kind of statistic that really hit me. Um, For 78% of respondents not to be monitoring their contract terms is a big deal because if you think about it, um, it, it takes anywhere from seven to $50,000 to, to generate a contract um, when you factor in uh, legal fees and cost of man hours uh, for, for generating that contact, contract. And when you're not treating that contract then as an asset, so you're not monitoring it, you're opening yourself up to a whole lot of uh, potential issues, uh, legal issues, um, like unforeseen uh, lawsuits, uh, but also uh, revenue leakage. Um, a report from the World Commerce and Contracting Association uh, found that companies are losing uh, about nine, the equivalent of about 9% of uh, their profitability, sorry, what is it? The equivalent of 9% of annual revenue and profitability um, from revenue leakage because they're not properly monitoring their contract terms. And okay. so why is, this, why is this the case? Why do companies spend so much uh, time and money generating contracts only to put them in a file storage somewhere or a filing cabinet and forget about them Uh, not treat them like an asset. We think that the reason for that is that um, it's hard to, to, to get the data from these things uh, because they're still defined in Word and uh, stored in PDF. It's hard to kind of read through them manually and say, okay, these are the terms I need to be aware of. Um, mm -hmm. And so we aim to kind of create a new medium and basically make it a lot easier to say, okay, here's my contract. These are the bits of data within this contract that are relevant to me. Tag that 
and then make it so that at the click of a few buttons, you can pull it into a report. You can send it on to your accounting system, uh, you know, CRM, ERP, whatever. What, whatever infrastructure you have in place, we're going to make it so that you can quickly send data directly from source documents to those onward use cases. So <laughs> I apologize for sort of going on like that for a while, but uh, I think it's important to get the, uh, the whole picture and see how we fit into it. Yes, uh, yes, of, co of course, because um, um, contracts are um, um, uh, own little um, world and complicated world. So uh, it's important that you um, describe the whole, um, whole um, thing behind it. Um, so who will um, manage that? Um, you have, is it a platform and um, who, which person in which company um, would be responsible for it? Uh, um, lawyers or um, who will um, track that? Right. Yeah, so um, on basically what we're offering is a... Um, A software as a service, so an online platform. Um, on the platform, companies will be able to uh, upload their pre-existing documents uh, to, to store on the platform, but also define, um, review, and execute new contracts uh, as their activities uh, dictate. Um, so there are uh, a wide variety of, of users um, that could be on the platform. During the contract generation, um, you could have your company's lawyer, your uh, lawyer that you work with externally, um, invited as a contributor, and so they can draft the, the document as they normally would. Um, <clears throat> you can have your sort of procurement or sales teams that are responsible for generating um, your revenue-producing activities uh, on the system as well. So they're also part of the contract uh generation review and signature process um, but when we're talking about okay we've now executed a contract and they're stored on the system now what who's using it um, I think that's really where the, the real unique proposition that we have is and we're thinking that um, your you know financial analysts your uh, auditors your kind of accountants the people who need to see the actual data from your contracts and, and um, you know, compile the data there and for, for accounting purposes or what have you, those are the ones that I think are, are core user group. Um, yeah. Yeah. So financial analysts, auditors, accountants, risk managers. Um, yeah. Portfolio yeah. managers. Yeah. I understand. So um, um, the question I have, so most Uh, or some uh, contracts are have um, dates um, where they are uh, when they are uh, had um, signed or when they running out. So is it possible to your platform that you put the running out um, date um, in in your own calendar so you can see ah uh, okay um, that the contract is running out um, so. Two months or three, mostly three months before I have to look at on it and um, 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 look for um, yeah renew it or um, say okay no no it's uh, fine. Um, is it possible to um, integrate the uh, own calendar with that uh, platform? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, uh... Integrations are definitely something we're going to work towards um, as, as time goes on. We need to kind of see what our customers are, are looking for in terms of integrations. So uh, whether that be a particular calendar system uh, or, or otherwise, um, we need to see. Yeah. Um, at the moment, the way that we're approaching sort of the, the issue of uh, being aware of renewal dates and, and things of that nature is uh, if we imagine a contract, And there's, there's a key date in there that we want to be aware of. What we can do is um, identify it to the system and tag it. Mm -hmm. And so if you kind of extrapolate that across, you know, all of the contracts, um, the similar contracts with that date um, in your portfolio, 
what we're going to allow you to do is um, basically query uh, those contracts and say, okay, show me the contracts uh, that have this uh, date to be aware of and let me know kind of which ones are, are coming up. And so what you can do is uh, come up with like a dashboard in the system that mm -hmm. says, okay, uh, these contracts are, you know, far off. It's not a worry. Uh, these are getting close. Uh, maybe, you know, when you factor in the uh, notice period, you know, you, something to be aware of. And then, like, these are the ones you need to be uh, taking action on now. And so, yeah, while we're not necessarily thinking of a, a direct calendar integration, although that's a good idea, um, mm -hmm. we are thinking about... Um, how people will track key dates uh, of that nature and um, automate sort of how they handle that that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a good uh, dashboard is a good solution, I think, um, to overview it. Um, but I think um, Germans are very cor very correct, yes, and um, sometimes they want to have it doubled, um, controlled. So... Um, That was reminding me, okay, maybe it's cool when you have done uh, um, like calendar integration um, to overview the, um, light over that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. But um, yeah, you're welcome for this uh, idea. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, what is the um, big vision behind a contract rally? Can you tell me something about that? Uh, so sort of um, what was like the inspiration behind it or where we're hoping to go or both? Both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of the history. Um, when, uh, when I got out of university um, after a brief stint in film production, uh, which is a whole different story, um, I ended up working for a commercial real estate company uh, in New York City called Kimco Realty Corporation. Um, they're a retail real estate investment trust. Um, basically, they owned and operated uh, shopping uh, retail shopping centers across the United States and at the time also Canada and I think to a certain extent Mexico. Um, anyway, <laughs> I was working as a risk analyst for them. And what that actually entailed was when they were looking to buy a new property. Um, I was part of the team that would be looking through all of the sort of documents for that property and coming up with our um, financial projection and other sort of risk uh, activities. And a lot of that entailed going through lease documents, so contracts uh, for, for real estate essentially. And so we would pull out in you know, the key details, like the, the rent information, uh, what was due, when it was due, uh, were there rent increases, um, <clears throat> renewal dates, uh, things of that nature, but also language to be aware of, co-tenancy restrictions, um, you know, tenant improvement and leasing commissions, uh, various metrics that, that are somewhat standard across uh, real estate contracts, but um, yeah. Anyway, in doing that, uh, we, we either were faced with one of two realities. One, we would uh, manually go through these documents ourselves and pull out the data, which uh, was very time consuming, or we would um, hire a third party uh, vendor that would create lease, ab lease abstracts for us. So they would sort of pull out those key data points for us using an OCR system. Um, That was costly and oftentimes not always 100% accurate. So that we then have to double check to make sure that the data we were getting from them was actually accurate to what was in the contract. So yeah. I was thinking there's got to be a better way of doing this. There's got to be a way of taking these documents um, that are essentially static and making them more alive and, and breathing, making it so that you can almost plug them into an analysis and have the, the software say, oh, I know exactly what the key bits of data are um, and pull it out automatically. We're, I wouldn't say that that's quite the level of automation that Contractually is offering right off the bat, but it's kind of the, the core driver of what we're getting at. And so 
you know, what we've landed on is how can we identify data um, within documents and then network it downstream. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, that, that offers companies a huge uh, time saving and, and money saving opportunity on that activity alone. So where, where do we hope to go from, from you know, MVP, I guess? Um, what we're hoping to do is kind of capture the whole uh, value chain from contract uh, execution all the way to where it's captured in accounting. So right now, if you think about it, you've got um, sort of your contract and invoicing activities. And then there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a gap between that and, and an accounting system, and that requires a lot of um, manual work as well to, to upload your invoices and, and other kind of financial activities to DATEV or um, LexOffice, what have you, um, and then kind of go from there. So we're hoping to sort of bridge that gap and make it so that data from your contracts can be networked to an invoice that can then be networked directly to a line item in your accounting software. And so really bridging the whole kind of value chain there and making it as frictionless, pain-free an experience as possible for um, end users. Yeah, yeah, uh, I see. So, um, where, yeah, it's then with that, is, uh, is, it is more easier to sometimes to handle, um, uh, how is it word, um, um, split it, um, split payments mm -hmm. yeah yep. because every time you have to think mostly when you're a little company you have to think about okay now i have to do the new uh invoice because it's the new month it's the new payment and stuff mm -hmm. um yeah it was that would definitely be more easier because you don't have to think about it always Uh, yeah, yeah, and that you don't lo lose uh, money sometimes or um, miss it out. Um, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you think about um, an old school sort of um, telephone switchboard with the operators that are connecting a line from here <laughs> to there, that's kind of what we're trying to do, you know, with our contract. You got your data in the contract and then we connect it directly to an invoice, which then connects to the relevant accounting kind of where it should be in the accounting system. So, yeah. 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 Nice. Nice. Um, so what um, kind of uh, issues do you still have to to complete the whole thing or is it is is it now in use or is it or is it still in progress um um right. how is it yeah so we're still uh wrapping up the the engineering of the mvp or the minimum viable product um mm -hmm. we're hoping to basically wrap that process up in the next uh month or so so by mid-february we're hoping to start introducing users to the platform um, on, on sort of a pilot or beta phase, if you will. Um, but um, we actually have a, a grand majority of the engineering already in place, so we're, we're hoping to go to market pretty quickly thereafter. Um, but, you know, with any, with any Greenfield sort of software development, so Greenfield meaning basically from scratch, yes. um, timelines quickly, <laughs> quickly get longer and longer. So... Um, You know, we've already we've already experienced a bit of pain on that front, but I think we're we're getting pretty close to the finish line and pretty confident in uh, mid February at this point, and hopefully March, April, uh, full fully going to market. Um, but yeah, custom software development is always full of always full of uh, unforeseen issues. Yeah, yeah, I see. So I will hold thumbs. That uh, yeah. <laughs> deadline is working. Um, yeah. So, uh, can you tell me um, how does it fit with your personal passion of public transportation? Yeah, so uh, a little bit of context for the, the German viewers. Um, 
but I mean, I'm sure a fair amount of you know already having um, done study abroad or exchange programs in the States, but we don't have the best public transit over there. Um, outside of New York and Chicago and some of the other big cities, um, it's, it's a work in progress. And so, <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I really value that. I think, you know, if it, to me it says that the government or the community um, is investing in itself. You know, we want to make it easier for people to, to do things in life without needing a car, uh, whether it's getting around uh, to see friends, um, whether it's, you know, picking up groceries or something, having the ability to use a bus or a train um, and not need to drive as a real, as a real benefit. And so how that kind of ties on to what we're thinking of is, um, I think in, in a very grand vision, perhaps, um, uh, one day it would be really nice, um, for us to make things easier for our end users. So, uh, infrastructure makes it easier for people to get around their city and enjoy their community. Um, we hope to make it easier for, for people to manage their sort of business activities in a way that they then have time to, to enjoy their life. They're not worried, up at night, worried about, you know, did I forget something or, or why, you know, why is this data not matching? Um, but more, more um, down the road than that, maybe we also kind of foresee the ability to sort of work on the government level and say, hey, like maybe we can plug this into the taxes somehow and automate that even more. So people mm -hmm. come tax season aren't like stressing over that because um, while it's easier here than it was in the States, um, it's still something that people have to take a bit of time out of every year. And because they don't think about their taxes uh, throughout the year, it's one of those activities that kind of takes a bit of dedicated time and effort. So maybe we can help um, be a bit of infrastructure on that level and, and make people's lives easier. Sorry, yeah. that was kind of a, a <laughs> spaghetti mess of a response, but um, basically we want to make lives easier for people just like infrastructure and public transit does for people in cities. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, um, okay. So it fits absolutely to your other project because you're a solution finder so it it seems you you analyze it you anal you an analyst yeah you you watch okay what's the problem um how can it could it be easier how you told um yeah that's very very good and cool and important um because i i, I remember um in my childhood um we um, I lived in more in a country based, yeah, um, not in a city. More of a rural community. Yeah, and um, so the bus bus was driving only four times a day, or yeah, so it was horrible. Yeah, when you want to go to the other city, so um, you have to. Um, Yeah, uh, plan it really, really exactly. You can't tell. Yeah, hey, I come yeah, spontaneously. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. There's a lot of friction involved in that. It's like um, you really have to sort of. Yeah, there's no flexibility. See exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think um, today it's more important to um, have uh, short ways. Um, to do something because yeah time is money and um, backwards yeah um, so I'm a friend of um, having short ways not because I'm lazy because um, the tasks are getting more and more and more in our lives so then we have to reach out that um, we look uh, that we have to look After that, that we have this short ways to mm -hmm. um, handle that and to, um, yeah, you understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like having defined workflows to sort of be like, okay, this is what I need to achieve, and this is how it should be achieved, and yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So. 
do you have a sort of um um yes a quote um that you want to tell our listeners um like wisdom or, or something um that you have uh, for the end hmm. a quote or a bit of wisdom I mean, I can I can end with sort of what Contractually's mission is. Uh, and then, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Let me let me see if I can come think of our mission off the top of my head. Yeah. So uh, basically, our mission is to make contracts the the networkable, data rich assets that they always should have been. So, um, yeah, if you find yourself in a position in work where you're dealing with kind of managing and monitoring contract terms um, and it's taking you too much time or you don't have a good system in place check us out <laughs> i think um we we've got an interesting opportunity at, uh, available for you and um yeah but uh, kind of as we've highlighted here um at the end of the day we're just trying to solve a problem you know we're not necessarily trying to sell you on something so um You know, if we can help out, great. Uh, but otherwise, do what do what works best for you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, so I will take your your LinkedIn pro profile and your website um, in the description below, and so it will be easier to reaching out for you. Uh, when somebody of our listeners is uh, interesting what uh, John Plusman is doing and um, is offering so um, yeah so thank you John that you joined and um, thank you to all our listeners and we're reaching out to the next um, episode of the business cast um, bye and thank you thank you